We now have a pretty good model of the image formation process, um, but there was a little sleight of hand in the explanation I gave um, in terms of what allowed us to come up with that very clean and simple perspective projection equation. And now what we're going to do is generalize that model a little bit to be a little bit more practical in real world settings. So what was the sleight of hand that I did there? The sleight of hand was that I defined points in the world relative to the camera coordinate system. So that's a little weird because what it means is that, imagine I have an object in front of me and I put a camera right here and I'm gonna specify the object's coordinates points relative to this camera, which means if I move the camera, the relative points there change. And that's weird. Really, there should be two coordinate systems here, really three coordinate systems. There should be a world coordinate system, how things are defined in the world. There should be a camera coordinate system, and then of course the sensor or image coordinate system to allow for a more generalizable image formation process. And that's what we're going to do right now. And the, the, the good news is that we've gotten the basics of the perspective projection, which are going to stay the same. Um, and now we just need to generalize, which is just gonna require a little bit more geometry and a little bit more algebra. Okay, so let's start by defining our coordinate systems. I'm going to specify points in the world relative to a now world coordinate system. You can see I've given the axes here. And notice that my world points are now defined by x, w, z, w. The w, of course, being the subscript that tells me I'm out in the world coordinate system. I plop a camera down in that world, and it has a coordinate system, x, c, z, c. Notice that these are both in world coordinate systems. They're both in, out in the physical world. They're both two-dimensional. The sensor coordinate system is here, and it has the same basic relationship to the camera that we had before. And so the only thing we've done is we've decoupled the camera from points in the world. So now I can specify points in the world relative to their own coordinate system. I can plop a camera down into that world and then do the imaging. And of course, this is gonna be a little bit more involved because now the geometry is a little bit different here. And so let's work through that geometry and that algebra. Okay. The first thing we have to do is relate these two, world, these two coordinate systems, the x, w, z, w in the world, and the xc, zc in the camera. Notice these are both two-dimensional. We we're not taking a picture yet. All I wanna know is if I specify a point in this coordinate system, what is its coordinate in this coordinate system? By the way, ask yourself, why am I doing that? Why am I trying to relate a point out here to a point in here? Well, the reason is that once I know it in the camera coordinate system, well then perspective projection takes over because then we're just back to where we were before. But I want to be able to do this to have more control of how I specify things out in the world. Okay, two coordinate systems, x, w, z, w, x, c, z, c, are related by a rotation, in-plane rotation, how much is this coordinate system rotated relative to this, and a translation of their origins. And we can write that out pretty easily um, as I've done down here. So what do I have here? I have my point in the camera, x, c, z, c, is equal to a rotation matrix, which is cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta, standard in-plane rotation, times the coordinate in the world, x, w, z, w, and then add on to that the translation, t, x, t, y, in the horizontal and vertical direction. Sorry, t, x, t, z, of course. Okay, so this is just a standard rigid body transformation that tells me how much do I need to rotate and translate these, the, the world coordinate system so that it aligns with this coordinate system. And once I've done that, I now know where that point right there is in this coordinate system. Okay, good. Now, one thing that's annoying about that notation is I have to lug around a rotation matrix and a translation vector. And we can bundle those up uh, together using so-called homogeneous equations. And so this is just an algebraic nicety. It's just a way of, of modeling everything with a single matrix instead of lugging around this extra term. So let's do that now. So let's start out here again. I have x, c, z, c. That's my point in the camera coordinate system. That is equal to uh, rotation, cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta, times the world coordinate system, x, w, so world coordinate point, x, w, z, w. And notice what I've done here now 
is I have added a 1 to this vector here. So I've got x, w, z, w, and I've added a little 1. That's the homogeneous coordinate. And that 1, of course, is going to multiply the tx and the tz to give me my addition. So let's just make sure we understand the matrix algebra here. So let's see what we're going to do. We've got a column vector here being multiplied by a 2 by 3 matrix. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take the first row of this matrix. Cos theta is going to multiply xw. Minus sine, w, minus sine theta is going to multiply zw. And tx is going to multiply 1. And what am I going to do? I'm going to add all those together. Sure, that's right. And then let's go down. And then what do I have? I've got the sine theta multiplies xw. The cos theta multiplies the zw, and the tz multiplies the 1, and I add those together. And what I get at the other end, of course, is just my xc, zc, which is the x and the z coordinate. So all I've done here is I've bundled up the rotation and translation into a single matrix by adding in this homogeneous coordinate into the world of 1. So it's just an algebraic nicety so I don't have to lug around two terms. All right, so now I haven't actually taken a picture yet. All I've done is said I've got a point out in the world coordinate system, and I can specify it relative to the camera coordinate system. But now I have to project that into the sensor. So how do we do that? One more step. OK, so let's start over again here. We've got, uh, let's see, let's, uh, OK, I've got my matrix right here. So here's my rotation and my translation, and I've got the uh, world point right here, x, w, z, w, 1, homogeneous coordinates. And so if I do that matrix multiplication, can we agree that what I get is x, c, z, c, this point, and this coordinate system? So let's now go down right here, and let's see, I've got here x, c, z, c. And now I want to project that into the image. And what's really beautiful now is I'm going to be able to do this with another matrix, which is this matrix right here. So this matrix is F0, 0, 1. The first row is F0, the second row is 0, 1. Let's make sure we understand what's happening here. So I'm going to multiply F times XC and 0 times ZC. That gives me FXC. Uh, let's go down one row. I'm going to multiply 0 times XC, 1 times ZC. That gives me ZC. And what I get here is uh, it's a two vector. So something's a little weird here, by the way, because when I project into the image, I should go into a single value. But notice here, remember, I'm in homogeneous coordinates. And now what I have are the two components of the perspective projection that I need. On the first component, I have fxc, that's the numerator. And on the bottom here, I have zc, that's the denominator. And notice that those are packed into this little guy right here in homogeneous uh, coordinates. Again, homogeneous just so that we can bundle up the rotation and the translation. And now I just have to go from homogeneous to non-homogeneous. And we know how to do that. We just divide by the homogeneous coordinate. So I take that little s over here that you have, and I just divide by it. And what that means is that my x in the sensor right here is going to be equal to fxc over zc. Okay? So all I've done is I've taken a point out in the world. I've converted it to a camera coordinate system and I've projected it into the sensor. And the only complexity here is we wanted to bundle everything up into a single matrix, and so we do all of this in homogeneous coordinates and then undo it at the very end by dividing by the homogeneous coordinate. Now, this, what's really nice about this model is it generalizes how we can talk about things in the world and the camera without having to have the camera in a very specific place or everything in the world specified relative to a single camera. But there is also another special relationship here, which is the relationship between the camera and the sensor. Notice that both of those, those origins are along the optical axis. And there's no really fundamental reason why that has to be. That's assuming that somehow that the center of the uh, sensor is exactly aligned with the optical axis. And that may or may not be true, and we want to be able to control for that. And so what we're going to do is add one more term. By the way, there's one more other relationship, which is the tilt of this. This could be rotated. We're going to assume it's not. We're going to assume that it's actually straight. 
Back in the day, in the early days of digital imaging, we had problems with the sensors being rotated and we had to account for that. Modern cameras don't have that problem, but they often have an offset issue where the center of the image is not necessarily along the optical axis, and so we want to be able to control for that. And the way I'm going to control for that is to put an extra term into this matrix right here, and that's that CX term. So CX is how much that um, origin has been shifted either up or down from the optical axis. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss it in right there, and let's see why that works. Okay, so let's now go down. We've, got, we, we've, we've done our rotation and translation of the world point to put it into camera coordinate system. That's that thing right there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply F times X, uh, and then I'm going to multiply CX times ZC to give me the first point over here. And then below, the 0, 1 multiplies, I still get a ZC below. And now let's go ahead and do the convert from homogeneous to non-homogeneous. And what happens is on the top, I've got F, XC, plus CX, ZC. And on the bottom, I have a ZC. So when we work that out, what happens? Well, I get FXC over ZC, that's as before. And then over here, the ZCs cancel out, and I just get a plus CX. So that little offset that you have here, all it does is it takes the coordinates and just shifts them. And you can see, of course, that's what it does. You can see it right here. If the origin here is shifted, all that it means is it's a shift in the image coordinate. And so that's not a really big deal. Everything just shifts a little bit. And you can see that in the term over here. Okay. So now we have, ah, I've just broken that out for you so you can see it explicitly. So there's one last thing we need, and it's a real nuisance here, but it's important to understand it. A point out in the physical world is, say, represented in terms of what units? Let's say meters, centimeters, inches, feet, whatever it is. It's some real world units. Um, things like the focal length are also measured in real world units, millimeters or centimeters. But pixels, images, are represented in terms of what? Well, pixels. We don't talk about how many millimeters in an image. We talk about how many pixels. And so when we go back to our equation over here, what we notice is what? We have out in, the, um, uh, in this matrix, we have units in real worlds. That's millimeters. Here, we have rotation. But here, we have translation. That's real world units. And here, we have real world units. But what we want over here and the projection are pixels. And so what we're going to do is add one more uh, point here, one more scalar value, which will allow me to convert all of these things, which are specified in real world units, let's say centimeters, and say, how many pixels is that by multiplying by a conversion? What is that conversion, that lambda? It's just the density of pixels inside of the sensor, which allows me to convert from uh, centimeters out into pixels. One last nomenclature is this intrinsic versus extrinsic matrix. So I have a point out in the world here, and I've imaged it through two matrices, an extrinsic matrix that tells me what is the relationship between the world and the camera, and an intrinsic matrix which tells me something about the inherent camera parameters, in this case, the focal length and the origin offset. And then, of course, I still have that little lambda right there. So I'm going to call this matrix the intrinsic matrix K, and I'm going to call this matrix the extrinsic matrix M. And the projection from the world, uh, little big P, to the image is going to simply be a product of these matrices times that scalar, which converts from centimeters out into pixels. Okay. Um, and notice here, remember we talked about ambiguity before. We talked about how all points along a single ray get imaged to the same point. You can see that ambiguity linear algebraically here. Why? What is the size of this matrix over here? Well, I've got a 2 by 2 matrix times a 2 by 3 matrix, which gives me a 2 by 3 matrix. That means I'm taking a point in a three-dimensional space and projecting it into a two-dimensional space. Loss of dimensionality. By the way, why, why do we seem to have gone into a three-dimensional and two-dimensional? We're still in 2D world here. It's because we're in homogeneous coordinates, so everything has been bumped up one dimension. And what that means is that that matrix is not invertible. 
I can't invert it. It's not a square matrix. And here again, you can now see linear algebraically why there is an inherent loss of information or an inherent ambiguity in the information in image formation process. Okay, so that was a lot of algebra. Um, so a couple of things, if you are rusty on matrix and vector uh, manipulations, go back and practice that because we're going to be using these matrices and vector representations uh, throughout. Conceptually, even if some of the algebra was confusing and some of the geometry was unclear, there's something very simple here, which is all I did was separate two coordinate systems. I've pulled the world coordinate system so I can specify things in a world. I relate them to the camera, and then I relate that to the image. So that's all we did. We went from two coordinate systems, camera and sensor, to world, camera, sensor. And again, the reason we do this is it affords a more generalizable model of the image formation process so we can reason in a more general form about the relationship between things in the world and things in the image and vice versa.